I want to show you something really cool. Thomas, where'd you go, man? Welcome back, it's nice to see you again. One of the best things about getting good at video and starting to learn how to do VFX is being able to share some of those skills with your family. So I'm gonna show you how I pulled off this short that I made, turning my nephew into Thor. It was pretty fun, it was not as hard as you would think it would be, and all it took was a little bit of work from Procreate and Apple Motion, both of which are very affordable programs and very easy to learn. Let me jump into it and show you how it works. For this type of a project, the first thing you wanna do is import a video into Procreate and then get your UI set up the way that you want. Now, the UI is pretty simple. If I just come up here to the settings, I can come up here to Canvas and I can turn on Animation Assist. This isn't doing anything special to my document. This is just a nice handy UI that makes it easy to switch between layers and play them back in a smooth way. It's just a nice convenience thing to make animation a lot simpler to do. Now with the UI set up the way that we want, let's take a look at how my layers are set up. When you import a video, each frame becomes a layer. And so one of the things that I need to do for this type of animation is split it up so that the actual drawing is separate from the video frame. Let me show you what I mean. If I come in here to this layer, I pick the tool that I like. For me personally, I like the technical pin. And I just draw right on top of it. If I play back the animation, the drawing's there, but you can see if I hide and show this layer, the drawing is actually part of this video frame, which is not what I want. I want to be able to apply effects to it later. So currently the way to work around this is every time you have a new drawing, you come up here and you press new frame, and then you swipe across both of these frames to group them together. And once you have them grouped together, then you can draw on the upper layer separate from the underlying video frame. You can see when I tap down the pencil, it asks me which layer I want. I pick the empty blank layer on top. And now that's getting me drawing in a separated way that I can then export later. Now, the only annoyance is that it's a little clunky to go through and manage all of the layers separately. And when I want to export, I actually have to go through and I have to hide each of the individual movie frames that's sitting underneath them so that I can export and have the drawn effect over the top of the movie layers. If you want to see that change, go tweet at Procreate or something. But for the time being, it's a little bit of pain, but it's really simple and it makes it so that I can get this effect perfectly cleanly over to something like Apple Motion where I can apply some more interesting effects. Now that we're finished with the effect, getting it over to Apple Motion is pretty straightforward. I just come up here to settings, share, and then I like to do PNG files. I found that that works well if I'm gonna bring these into Blender or something else. QuickTime supports it, Apple Motion supports it. So that's my file format of choice. With all of the individual PNG files sent over to like iCloud Drive or Dropbox, it's really easy to import them into Apple Motion. You just go to the import dialog and you can see I have all of these sequential images. They each represent the different frames of my animation. You just have to make sure that you select the image sequence checkbox and then it will treat them just like they're a video file on the other side. Now that we have everything imported, there's just a couple of filters that I want to introduce you to all under the same category that I use every time I'm going to do some sort of effect that's similar to this lightning or light shining effect. If I come up here to filters and I go down to glow, you can see there's a great collection of different kinds of glow. Now the first one I wanna show you is Dazzle. Dazzle is really good for getting a retro 80s style glow, but with a little bit of tuning, we can get something that actually looks really nice and not quite as gaudy. You can see the first slider is the amount, which is obvious it's how much it's actually going to dazzle or glow outwards. There's also sort of a straight line that's being drawn through the thing that is glowing. Now that's what the angle adjusts and it does look sort of similar to what you would see with a normal camera lens and the distortion that you would actually see on some light streaks. I think it's just a play with it to make it feel nice type of a thing. There's not an actual correct answer on this one. Now you can tune in brightness and threshold to control how bright and at what point it starts clipping to white. And then finally we have spike count, which is the one that if you really crank it up, really makes it start to look like an 80s movie effect. And you can see if we can zoom in, it has that dazzle effect. 
Now we're not going for Robin Sparkles here, so I keep this cranked all the way down and I think it gives it a really nice look. So that's the lightning. Let's talk about the light rays, the glow that's coming down from the sky. First things first, let me walk you through the setup. The original animation I drew wasn't quite long enough for how long I wanted the animation to play. And so what I did was I just looped it over a couple different instances and they're all cut and trimmed so they're slightly different, but they all have the same effect applied to them. If I come up here to glow and then I come down all the way to light rays, you can see I get close, but what I really need to do to get the effect that I want is to apply the screen blend mode. Screen blend mode is really good if you're doing any type of digital painting to make something look like it is light that is shined on the layer beneath it. Now with both of these set up, you can see I've got something that actually looks pretty good. And tweaking the light rays filter to try to get the glow just right is all a matter of taste. For me, I had color in the light rays, and so I wanted to make sure that it looked plenty glowy, plenty ethereal, but I didn't want it to clip to white. I wanted to make sure that I could still see the color shining through, even though it was very white and very bright. Now with that same effect applied to each of the layers, there was one last thing I wanted to do to really sell the effect, and that was apply overdrive to my base footage. Overdrive is another glow effect, and it's pretty straightforward. I just mapped the inner and outer glows to really bright whites, and then you can keyframe the amount that makes it so it looks like things are getting blown out, and it makes it look like your camera's exposure is just getting completely blown apart. And with all of that done, this is the final effect. I want to show you something really cool. Thomas, where'd you go, man? All right, hopefully you enjoyed that quick tutorial. I think it's really fun to approach this hand-drawn style and Procreate makes it super simple to do, especially if you're working at a budget or you just don't have the experience to use some of the more expensive, the bigger budget, the Hollywood style VFX tools that are out there. All right, if you wanna see more like this, let me know in the comments below and make sure you like and subscribe. Your support really does mean the world to me. All right, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.